an alternative to uh, surgery for patients experiencing urinary tract symptoms from uh, benign prosthetic hypertrophy. So enlarged prostate that's causing obstruction of their bladder, inability to urinate normally. There's various different symptoms like waking up in the middle of the night, not being able to go, wake stream. It's a treatment that doesn't go into the uh, urethra or the penis to remove prostate tissue to open up that obstruction. We actually go through the blood vessels um, and we I, I inject particles, small tiny particles, which cut off the blood supply and embolization like to the prostate, to the small vessels in the prostate, and then the prostate starts to shrink um, because the tissue is no longer getting any blood flow. Starts at about, about two weeks, and then optimal uh, symptom relief is about, it peaks about three months, but it can, it can keep going in about six months too. So it starts in about a couple of weeks. It's the side effects. Um, there's less side effects. And uh, with the, the data that's quoted for say TERP, which is the gold standard of uh, prostate treatment for BPH is about 80% of people get uh, retrograde ejaculation. So the ejaculant goes in the reverse direction and that is very bothersome for, for most men. I do have them all see a urologist to make sure they, you know, this is appropriate for them and there's no other uh, procedures that they may be interested in or maybe more appropriate for them. So the bigger the prostate, the better um, candidate they are for the procedure because there's more tissue for us to, to shrink. They also have to be having symptoms, so not Everybody with enlarged prostate has the urinary tract symptoms. Also patients who don't want surgery, patients that are older and can't have surgery, um, those are good candidates. Patients with a catheter, indwelling catheter that helps them urinate, they're great candidates because it's great to see that catheter come out, uh, and often it does, and then they can pee almost normally. So they come in about an hour before the procedure, they get an IV, you know, get make sure, you know, vitals and all that are from our nurse. And then we make sure that they haven't eaten because we can give them sedation. Usually they do it under moderate sedation or twilight as some people call it. And then they come into this room here. This is the x-ray camera where I can see live x-ray pictures of the prostate arteries. So I access either the groin or the wrist. I get, they're already sedated at that point. Um, I go down to where the prostate arteries are um, in the pelvis, take pictures of it. Um, I can do various, um, this has various technologies where this turns into a CAT scan so I can get much more detail. Um, this, this, this little um, actually camera spins around and makes a, a CAT scan. And once I localize the prostate artery, I will eject these small microspheres. They're about 100 to 300 microns, so micrometers. Of, uh, they're, they're made of a polyvinyl alcohol uh, or, or a plastic polymer. There's different, different types out there. Uh, into the prostate artery and making sure that they don't flow anywhere else into other organs that are nearby. And we do it on each side and it takes about an, an hour and a half to two hours and the patient recovers for an hour or two, depending if we go through the wrist of the groin. And then as long as they're able to urinate, they go home. I think what sets us apart is we're obviously University of Colorado. So we combine um, um, excellent academic center with an excellent clinical center at Ridgeline here. So, you know, I am a, a, a assistant professor, I'm a clinical professor, and I actually am involved in clinical trials uh, to see that one specifically is to see the difference in outcomes between prostate artery embolization and a urological surgery, such as um, homeom laser enucleation. And I have, there's no places in the, Denver metro area that are doing, um, you know, this kind of combination uh, practice that we are.